Hall's True Life Academy helps intelligent, ambitious people achieve and accomplish amazing things for the purpose of living the life they've always dreamed of. We will show you how to tap into the gifts that we all have been given. True Life Academy gives you the best possible chance of living a life full of wealth, health, love, and personal power. As a certified coach, mediator, speaker, and trainer, Clarence has the skills needed to guide you to the most amazing life you can imagine for yourself, focusing on your relationships, finances, health, and career. So join the Academy and be awakened to your true life, the life you dream of, the life that fulfills your purpose, yes, the life you were intended to live. True Life Academy starts now. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to True Life Academy. This is Clarence Caldwell, your host, your coach, your guide for the week, and thank you again for joining yet another week, another week in paradise. Yes, all of life is paradise. We are going to have a special guest with us tonight, so hang on for this one because I think you're really, really going to enjoy the conversation tonight. Well, we are going to really talk about something that we, uh, we've kind of overlooked in the past, and that's something that uh, our, our guest is going to bring to us. But before we, I introduce her to you, let me just remind you and ask you if you've had a great week. Uh, hopefully you lived your life this week in the way we always talk, and that is living in gratitude, living in thanks. Those three, these three things, living in thanks, giving when you can, and always, because you have that power to choose, love first and then choose. And when we talk about loving first, I want to be clear about that. I mean love yourself. Love the connection you have with your authentic self. When you do that, your choices will leave no regrets. So stay in an attitude of gratitude. Give when you can. Love first and then choose and you'll have an amazing life. And if you've lived that way this past week, I know you've made an amazing life for the people around you. So while we, uh, while we uh, get ready to introduce our guest, let me just uh, uh, hopefully remind you of something we talked about last week. Last week, we talked a bit about how we have the, uh, uh, the power of now, the ego that, that keeps us from from really experiencing the power of now and, and how we often live in the past and how there's virtually no power in the past, but your power is with your present. And uh, I just want to remind you of that because if you live your, your life that way, you'll begin to see that you have more control over creating your future. So let go of the past that you have to take it with you. It's baggage that you've packed along the journey, and you have it, so it doesn't go away. In fact, it has created growth for you. It has created memories for you. It has, it has taught you a lot, uh, and you've learned from the past. But don't focus on the past. If you spend too much time back there, uh, that will absolutely drain your personal power. So with that said, uh, I'd like to... Uh, 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 g get our guests engaged with us right away and uh, because I don't want to take up the time that we have to spend with her. She is an amazing, an amazing coach. She's a high-performance coach that has um, just an excellent, excellent background, um, and she certainly is uh, known around the world. I'll, I'll say known around the world. She's internationally known as a, as a uh, process, taking her clients through the process of transformation so that they can create and live a bold and happy, successful life. Now, I love the word bold because we talk about living an amazing life here, but bold just, just says it all. And so I want to spend a little time with her today uh, introducing you to her and also allowing you to learn from her knowledge and her wisdom that she has to share. And I'm, I am speaking about Lauren Janot. And Lauren, if you're there with us, just say hello. Hey, Clarence, I'm here. <laughs> All right. I'm glad you're here. And thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. And I know whatever part of the world you're in is probably a lot later than here in California. So thank you for, for spending your evening, your, your time with us today. I really appreciate your presence. It's totally my pleasure. I'm excited to be on the show. 
That's fantastic. Fantastic. So before we uh, get into some of the really unique things that you're doing with your your coaching practice, because I, I found it just absolutely fascinating uh, and I really want to spend some time there. But I'd like to know a little bit more about you and I'd like for our listeners to know a little bit more about you as well. Maybe uh, where you've where you've been, how you've got into this business and, and what you're doing today. Perfect. Uh, so I'm originally from South Africa, in case you didn't pick up on the accent. And I have been living in Canada for 22 years. So my story started out, I played competitive tennis for about eight years growing up in South Africa. So I've always been interested in health and wellness. Um, it's just, I think it's in my blood, to be honest. Um, and... When I moved to Canada, I made that decision that I wanted to pursue this industry as a career. So I started off doing personal training, and I got certified in personal training, and I did kinesiology, and then realized that, you know, you could work out as much as you wanted, but if your nutrition wasn't in place, you weren't going to get the same results. And so I went back to school, and I studied holistic nutrition, And part of that also stemmed from my background in that I had an eating disorder for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. And so food and nutrition was just a huge fascination for me, but also a mammoth. And so I figured going back to school and just learning more about it would empower me, which it absolutely did. But even through all of that process in working with clients and doing literally the most person-specific program that I could do, I still found that so many of them were coming back with different stories, excuses, week after week after why they didn't implement something, why they couldn't implement something. You know, it was a birthday, it was a, a trip, it was, there was always something. And so I realized both from my personal experience and working with all these clients that your psychology is the hugest part of it and how you think about things and how you see things. And so I went back to school and I did, I studied cognitive behavior therapy and I also got certified as a master trainer in personality um, assessment and mapping. Mm -hmm. And putting all of that together kind of really took it to a whole other level and started working then in helping people more to understand themselves and how they were thinking and how they were approaching life. And, and getting significantly better results starting at that end of the spectrum. I see. I see. Well, that's, that's, a, that's an amazing journey. Uh, so you're a great tennis player then, yes? I was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it might not be too pretty right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, some things you don't forget. So uh, uh, I think from that, you, you probably have developed some pretty good uh, uh, habits in terms of your physiology, but you did mention, uh, and, I, and I hope it's okay to go here, you did mention you had an eating disorder. Can you tell us about that? I did. And, you know, looking back in hindsight, it's, it's much easier to to see what was going on. But growing up, my entire identity was tied into being a tennis player. You know, uh. I, I trained seven days a week. I, I played in South Africa, you could play 12 months of the year because of the weather so mild. So everyone knew me as Lauren, the tennis player. That's all I knew about myself. And so when I stopped playing tennis, it's like, I don't know who I was. And I also put on a lot of weight, um, obviously going from training so many hours a day to dramatically cutting that down. And so I was going off to university, to another city, new people. And so somehow I got it in my head that the only way I was going to fit in at university, the only way people were going to like me was if I was thin. Don't know where I got that from, but I got it. Wow. And so basically I just put everything that I put into my tennis, I put into dieting. And so I was pretty good at it. Mm. And, um, you know, I really struggled with it for so many years until... At some point, I realized that, you know, A, there's more to life and that I wanted my life to be about more than just what I looked like and how many calories I was eating or not eating. And so just all the studying and personal growth 
development that I've done over the years just slowly helped me put those pieces together and and get over it. But it took a good 20 years. Yes, yes. So there was a there was a transformation that took place, but it, it takes time to truly transform. Yeah, it did. It took a while, but, um, you know, I also think that that helped me in the work that I do now and made me um, a better coach, having been through that. Yes. So when... when when you were uh, uh, struggling with that, and, and I, I believe me, we're not going to spend the whole show talking about this. That's issue. okay. I'm open to anything. <laughs> but I'm, I'm interested because there there was a recognition that you were really chasing what uh, everyone else's, what you thought everyone else's uh, image of you might have been, and, and you wanted to correct that. Is that is that accurate? Yes, and it was also a case of just looking for everything outside of me to mm. give me that sense of fulfillment, acceptance. You know, with all the things that society deemed that made you successful. You know, yes. how you looked, who you were married to, where you lived, the car you drive, the job you had. With all those external things that I was chasing, and I was, I was good at it. I, got, I managed to <laughs> reel in all of those things. But no matter what I had, I knew that there was something like in me that was missing. Like I never felt completely satisfied. Right, And right. it just, it got to the point where I just got, okay, like enough's enough. Like I need to get to the bottom of this. So it was, I had a huge drive to figure it out. That's, that's uh, you know, that certainly speaks a lot to what you had in you that drove you to that. And, and I know not everyone is connected there and strong enough to get through that. So when we come back from the break, I want to ask you about uh, your clients or people that you've worked with that, that were in similar places, maybe not with eating disorder, but something, something else that allowed uh, you, what you did to allow them to break through that. So uh, when we get back from the break, we're going to talk with Lauren about some real life issues. We'll be right back. Academy with certified trainer, mediator, and life coach Clarence Caldwell returns after this short break. Go big money! Okay, we will. We're going to teach you how to tell your money where to go. It's Intelligent Investing with Pam Otten on Toginet. Learn how to be a savvy investor from someone who has your best interest at heart. Pam Otten is a financial advisor who loves to help successful business owners and entrepreneurs understand the mysteries of the investment world. And she's not afraid to share that knowledge. Pam is an unashamed Christian and qualified kingdom advisor, which means she's trained and committed to integrating biblical principles into her financial advice. Pam believes investing isn't rocket science. This is the financial advisor who's in your corner and truly understands and cares about you and helping you achieve your goals. Securities and advisory services are offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA, SIPC. It's Intelligent Investing with Pam Otten on Toginet. We often ask, is that all there is? Why is this happening to me? Why am I always broke? How am I going to survive this mess? Then join Dr. Geraldine Tegeloff for Nature Spirit Speak, 7 p.m. Tuesday evenings on Toginet.com. Geraldine is a metaphysician, nature intuitive, and prosperity coach who shares with you how she went from totally broke to living what she would call her perfectly prosperous life. Through the combination of a wealth of metaphysical knowledge and her amazing ability as an intuitive, Geraldine brings to you the secrets of her magical journey of healing emotionally, spiritually, and financially. As with the ancient seers and master teachers, Geraldine has a unique gift of being able to connect to the simple yet profound messages brought to us by Mother Nature. And happily shares these through today's note to self on her webpage, naturespiritspeak.com. If you need help with your journey, why not connect with Geraldine during her show, Nature Spirit Speak, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Central on toginet.com. Welcome back to True Life Academy, your source for developing the skills and motivation to create an amazing life of purpose and fulfillment. With more transformational keys for success, here is your host, Clarence Caldwell. 
Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're here with Lauren Jeannot, and we are talking about um, the things in real life that get in our way and how we get stuck and, and even transforming out of them. And Lauren has been sharing with, her, with us one of her challenges through life and how she got through it. She also described many of her credentials, which are, are wide and varied and uh, I, I'm very, very impressed with what she's been able to accomplish since her transformation. And we're going to ask her right now, Lauren, if you're available, let's talk about that shift that you went through and, and how you really got out of that and, and how you coach others to get out of it. So for me, it really came down to that I knew and wanted more out of my life. I wanted to have more meaning. I wanted it to have more contribution. And even today, like I'm that person who needs to know why everything is the way it is. And it's just in me. And I just thought, well, that's who I am. But what's really interesting is I have recently implemented genetic testing into my high performance coaching program. Mm -hmm. And when I had my genetic profile done, the expression of one of the genes that we look at shows whether someone, how motivated someone is or not, and how some people absolutely need that deep, meaningful why to motivate them and other people don't. And when I saw that, it was like, oh my gosh, like this totally makes sense. And it just, there were so many incidences like that where, you know, like oftentimes, you know, a lot of the clients I work with, they think, oh, well, that's just how I am and I'm not motivated or I'm not disciplined and I don't have the drive. And it's not that they don't, it's just that they have a weaker expression of how that shows up. And to know that I think is so empowering and valuable because for me, on the one hand, it like, it took, I felt like the weight of the world had been lifted off my shoulders because I realized that, you know, even certain aspects of my eating disorder showed up in my genetics. And I realized there wasn't anything wrong with me. It was just the way I wired. I was wired. So I could just stop blaming myself and beating myself up. And then on the other hand, like I knew what I was working with or not working with and could support myself in the absolute best, most empowering possible way. So, you know, so I guess that's the long answer to your question that for me, I needed that huge why. And there were some life events that helped me get there. And it was also just my personality that needed that. But I also came to the point where I wanted to find it. Yes. Well, you know, I'm, I'm just fascinated by that, that piece that you're talking about, the, the genetics that uh, I guess gives us a predisposition to either uh, feel, uh, think, or behave in certain ways. Can you tell us more about that? Because that one really fascinates me. It does. And I, I also, I'm just totally fascinated by it. But even what you said, you know, the ability to feel emotions is the result of a genetic expression. And that's why there are some people who, you know, will learn from their mistakes and other people who just keep, seem to keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again. And part of that is linked to our ability to feel emotions and the depth at which we can feel emotions. So, for example, with one gene expression, you know, someone will, for example, go on a roller coaster ride, absolutely hate it, like I do, think they're going to die in the process, and get off it and go, I'm never going on it again. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> but then they get to the, you know, they go to the amusement park like six months later, and they go, oh, well, it couldn't have been so bad, and they get on it again. <laughs> And then while they are, they go like, why the heck am I doing this? I know I hate it. But they keep doing it over and over again. Whereas someone else with a different genetic expression, just driving past the theme park, they will be able to recall those emotions and the depth of the emotion that they felt. And that will be enough for them to know that they don't need to go on it again. So, you know, knowing these things 
can just help us to set up different mechanisms in our day that are going to support us better. And that's why with my coaching, I before I've even started with someone, I have a really good indication of what their challenges are going to be, what's going to be easy for them to do, what's going to be hard for them to do. So I can be so much more strategic in how I support them through that coaching process. I see. So when, when you're going through this, uh, let's, let's just take an example. Let's say um, I'm going to uh, hire you as a coach, and um, I've got things, some real-time issues that I'm, I'm dealing with, and I also want to improve my life overall. You would take me through, even before we started working together, you would take me through a level of, of profiling or genetic testing of some sort? Right. So typically what I do is, and again, like it's not mandatory. If someone doesn't want to do it, they absolutely don't have to do it. I've been coaching for years without it. Um, so it's not, if someone doesn't want to do it, they don't have to do it. But if they do, the first step is to have the genetic test done, which is so literally you get a kit that gets sent to your house in the convenience of your home. You do a saliva test, put it in the kit, mail it to the lab. You don't even have to leave your home to do it. So it's a very simple, painless process. It takes about two weeks to get the results. I get the results. I analyze them, go through the reports, and put it all together. And then our first session would be a debrief of what your results were and what does it mean for you and what does it mean for us moving forward. And only after that, we then get into the whole strategy around the coaching and where it's going to go what I can help with, et cetera. So when, when uh, the results come back and, and uh, you and I uh, uh, schedule our first session together, do you review those results with me or do we just talk about what's, what my, my concerns or issues are and then you in the background do a little comparison or how, how does that play out? No, I go over the results with you. So I will show you which expressions of the genes that we test in this panel you know, what you have of them. So, for example, we'll be able to know definitively and scientifically that maybe you are, it's going to be hard to motivate you, that we're going to know that planning and scheduling is going to be difficult for you. We maybe know that you are um, not going to respond to triggers easily. And so knowing all these things we can be strategic in how we set up your program. On the other hand, we may know that, you know, these things are going to be easier for you. Planning's not an easy, uh, not an issue, but you need a big why as to why you're doing stuff. So then I know that I need to give you more explanation. I need to give you more of the backstory of why I'm setting up things the way they are, why I'm asking you to do things that I am, because that's going to be important for you. Whereas another person they don't need to know that, and I'll know whether they need to know that or not. Right. Interesting. The uh, typical uh, coaching scenario um, has somewhat of, a, I guess, a, a preliminary profile that's that's done, but it's usually done in the form of a, a questionnaire, or you know, the the. the the client, potential client, at answers a bunch of questions. Right. This... And I do that as well. Oh, so, I see. Okay. So I do that as well because that's, you know, that's giving me an indication of where they feel they're struggling, what their goals are, what they've been successful at, what they've struggled with from their perspective, yes. and what they'd, like, what they'd like to achieve. So they fill that out as well. Excellent. So there is that intake pro- So they, that's part of the process as well. Got it. Got it. That's so uh, amazing because you now have not only what the person knows about themselves that they're sharing with you through the answers and responses to that intake questionnaire, but you also have some things that they may not know about themselves to either augment, support, or or at least give you a, a more rounded figure of who they really are. Right. And, you know, some, the one thing that I get from some people is, well, what's the point in doing this? Because if it's in my genetics, uh, I can't change it. So what's the point in even knowing about it? And, you know, we all, I think we all know that genetics is part of the equation, but your lifestyle and your nutrition and your habits 
have the ability to either turn those certain genes on or off. So how you live your life can, can affect that. And so again, to me, the more you know, the better you can adapt your behaviors so that you give, you're giving yourself the best chance. Right, yes. If that, if that makes yes. sense. Oh, it makes a lot of sense because uh, the typical approach is to, is to really start giving the client uh, some things they can do that, that helps change their, their thought process and, and ultimately their behavior. Um, but certainly knowing if it's one of those deep-seated propensity to do or feel a certain way based on the genetics, then the, the coach can then, uh, I guess, ratchet it up a notch to, to really focus in on, on certain key areas through their, through their strategy and how they're going to coach this person. Right. Absolutely. So it can really, um, in some regards, short, shortcut the whole process because there is less trial and error or there's just more effectiveness in the selection of the path that we're going to go on. Right, right. So, you know, when, when we go through that, I mean, does it, is there a, a likelihood of falling back into the old patterns, the old habits, the old genetic predisposition? You know, I think there always is. And, but again, I think creating, having that awareness and understanding mm -hmm. that, I, that when it's happening, I think you're going to catch it much quicker. Uh, yes. And you're going to realize what's going on. And it's not just because you've lost motivation or you've lost the desire to do it. But, you know, and I, I see that with myself all the time now. Sure. Um, where, you know, I wrote a blog a little while ago. Are you a one block type of chocolate person or are you the whole slab? <laughs> and well, uh, so I'm going for that second or third block. I know what's going on and I realize it's not something I, it, it, that, that I haven't done. That's just my nature. And I'm actually able to stop myself because I have that understanding. Okay, well, we're going to be right back to finish that with Lauren. Hang in there. True Life Academy with certified trainer, mediator, and life coach Clarence Caldwell returns after this short break. Congratulations on being the proud owner of an adorable, soft, cuddly, sweet-smelling, smiling, cooing, hungry, tired, gassy, screaming little bundle of joy. So now what? Where's the owner's manual for this thing? Where are my instructions? Right here. It's baby and toddler instructions with Blythe Lipman on toginet.com. Infant care specialist Blythe Lipman has worked with babies for over 20 years and works extensively with new parents providing workshops, in-home visits, tips, and daily phone calls to ease those frazzled nerves. With baby and toddler instructions, you can get the advice you need on how to survive and enjoy your baby's first year. For more information on Blythe and how she can help you, go to babyinstructions.com. From 32 ways to stop a baby from crying to 14 ways to get a baby to eat and so much more, it's baby and toddler instructions with Blythe Lipman on toginet.com. Have you heard? The pages of American Patchwork and Quilting Magazine come to life on our new weekly online radio show, American Patchwork and Quilting. Join Pat Sloan, our blogging and quilt designer host, as she talks about the latest trends, ideas, and inspirations. Her guests include quilt pattern designers, authors, quilt shop owners, and our editors. All quilters, just like you. Call in with your questions. Get quilting tips from industry experts. Learn about free patterns. Hear behind-the-scenes stories from our magazines, American Patchwork and Quilting, Quilt Sampler, and Quilts and More. Get the scoop on free stuff and find out more about the best independent quilt shops in North America. To listen to a live show, tune in Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Just log on to allpeoplequilt.com slash radio. To hear past shows, go to iTunes and search for American Patchwork and Quilting Radio. We hope you'll join us because we know that quilting changes everything. True Life Academy, your source for developing the skills and motivation to create an amazing life of purpose and fulfillment. With more transformational keys for success, here is your host, Clarence Caldwell. 
Hello and welcome back, everyone. We are having a fascinating conversation with Lauren Jono about her coaching style, her coaching techniques, and the one piece of it that is really, really unique and, and, it, and, it, and it, it sounds so very effective is this uh, genetic testing that takes place that opens up the, the doors the, the, of, of the hidden treasures that are within each of us that are genetically coded. And uh, it allows uh, Lauren to more effectively support, coach, and help the people that she is uh, inclined to help. So l- let's talk a little bit more, Lauren, about this, uh, this issue of, of how genetics affect us. Here at True Life Academy, we talk a lot about managing our belief systems and, and, and how that impacts uh, our lives and the choices that we make. Uh, we, we talk about our thoughts and how our thoughts can create our reality and really understanding how we can manage those thoughts and uh, even our emotional scale, our feelings from fear all the way to love and, and how, that, how that plays out. Uh, can you give us some insight on how the genetics of, of each of us impacts those things? Absolutely. So I totally agree with you in that that whole, and I, I mean, I think it's indisputable at this point in that how our thoughts do have such a huge impact on the outcome of our life and what happens. And at the same time, we have a choice in the thoughts that we have. So we can choose to wake up in the morning and step into our day a certain way, or we can choose to step into it a different way. So I think the power of that is absolutely huge. The yeah. underlying factor with that where, you know, the genetics could shed some light on that is that really at the core of everything, I would say the primal, almost the primal determinant of a lot of things in our life is our ability to perceive and process pleasure our ability to like and dislike things. So if you are of a certain genetic expression where it's harder for you to perceive pleasure, it's your, you experience it for much shorter, you, the depth of it is less, then it would make sense that your level of motivation is going to be lower. So... You know, if if you if you don't perceive the benefit, the pleasure of changing those thoughts and how that can change how your life unfolds, how your day unfolds, then really, how motivated are you going to be to do that? Right. And I see that with a lot with a lot of people. And so again, you know, then we we go to the fact that oh, well, they're just a pessimist. They they this, they that, and the other. Well. In a way, maybe they are, but it's not their fault. It's, it's just the expression of their genes that they inherited. Yes. And so, again, I think knowing that um, is empowering because, you, you know, from my perspective, and I actually fall into that category, I, I know that I have to work so much harder than other people who have the opposite expression to be positive, to make those better choices, because it's not in my natural makeup. If I was left to my own devices, I'd be like a miserable person. I would always see the glasses half empty. That's, left to, that's, that's how it would be. So I know that I have to work harder but I know the benefits of it and I just embrace that and and in my mind I've just convinced myself that that makes me stronger and tougher and more resilient and I've put a positive spin on it yes well you know it's it's, it's interesting you said that you have a choice because that is all that's awesome to hear because that certainly validates everything we talk about in terms of you know this I call it a gift that we have this power to choose and uh, preceding the gift, I was doing a video here recently where I talked a lot about choice. And what I've come to learn is that there's this piece that precedes our uh, activation of that gift of choice. And 
And that thing that precedes it is, I call it awareness. And when we are aware, then we can make the choice, uh, you know, with our eyes wide open. Uh, you know, it's one of the things I, I believe, and I think people would ar- probably argue with this, uh, but I believe it's what separates us as humans from many of the species on the planet. I wouldn't say all, but many of the other species on the planet, that we have this awareness. We're aware that we're aware, and that allows us to choose. And so it's interesting that, that you say this thing of choice is so important. And the other thing that I guess I want to just stress is that it's not that, I think, like in many things in life, lots of things have their pros and cons. I don't think anything is perfect at face value. And so even if you look at, you know, whatever gene expression you have, there's pros and cons to it. So, for example, if you look at the person who has the gene expression where they feel emotions really deeply and those emotions imprint on them in a huge way. So, for example, the person who just needs to go on the roller coaster once and just driving past will be enough. Right. So you could say, oh, that's so great for them. They're so lucky. They, you know, you know, they're born that way. But at the same time, that same person is also going to be the person who's extremely sensitive, who is, has the potential to be a very anxious person, who has the potential to worry a lot. And so, you know, like it's not every, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Right. So there's pros and cons. And where's the other person who, who doesn't have that same depth of emotion, who doesn't have those emotions imprinted them, on them as strongly. And so, you know, for them, they're the person who's going to make the same mistake possibly many times, right? So that's not great. However, that's also the same person who's going to be extremely resilient. They are going to, every time they fall up, they're just going to get up and keep going and keep trying and keep trying. That's a huge benefit. So I think we've got to look at the whole package and, you know, realize the pros and cons of all these different expressions and not that one's totally good and one's totally um, not good. Right. That's an excellent point because it is what it is. The key is knowing what it is so that you can now manage through it in a a more effective way, I guess. Right. So leverage off the positives, support the negatives, and You know, when I say support them, that could be through nutritional supplementation. It could be through the way you set up your day. It could be through your lifestyle, the habits that you put into your life to support those things. So there are lots of different ways that we can support those in inverted commas weaknesses or, you know, things that are more challenging. And so it's not, you know, all doom and gloom. Right. Good. Good. Well, it's good to hear. <laughs> the, you know, I'm, I'm anticipating uh, you know, someone saying to me, well, that's just the way I am. I'm genetically predisposed to do it this way, so accept me for who I am. And there's probably some truth to that, but it doesn't excuse uh, the things that we can really uh, be right. aware of and, and make choices around. And you know what? A lot of people do say that. Uh. And those are typically not the people I coach. <laughs> 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 I want to work with people who, regardless of the challenges they have, like are, are looking to, you know, get ahead, uh, achieve more in their life, more fulfillment, satisfaction, success, regardless yes. of, of what's potentially stacked against them. Right. I just kind of want to know what is stacked against me so that I can swing to the left or to the right and, you know, circumvent <laughs> if I can. <laughs> So in the process of, of working with someone to, I'll just call it, override their, their DNA propensities, uh, are there specific programs that you put them on that, that are long-lasting or are, are they kind of short-term measures that you use to, to work with them? They're more long-lasting. So, you know, the high, the high performance coaching program that, that I take my clients through, you know, from week one, they are learning skills and strategies and tools, but these are things that you need to implement on a daily basis. Some of them more than once a day. 
And like learning anything new, at the beginning, it, it takes more consciousness, it takes more awareness, it takes more effort. But, you know, once you start doing it regularly, like with anything, it becomes second nature. And you don't have to think about it as much. And it just, it's part of who you are. And again, like I've seen that with myself, like even some of the things that I've really focused on implementing this year, where at first it was like I was really thinking about it a lot all the time. Now uh, it's just, it's just who I am. I don't even think about it. It's just how I operate naturally. And that's the beauty of the human being, right? We can train ourselves to change, to be different, to step up to a different level. And and I just love that because I just think it just shows how we all have such enormous potential if we're willing and want it to achieve things. Yes, that, that's, that's a very powerful statement because mo- a lot of coaches that I have known in the past have basically coached to specific issues like uh, I, I can't seem to get these things done all the time. So they just coach on a, on a I'll call it an accountability level. They, they, right. they get people to create goals for themselves and to-do lists and they give them all these tools, but they're really not changing the person in a way that makes it long lasting. So it's great to hear you say that. Yeah. And, and you know, and there's a place for that. And some people are only ready for that. Yes. So, again, it's just knowing where you're at and what you're ready to step into. That's, that's fabulous. Uh, very quickly, can you tell us how people can get a hold of you and where to reach you? Yes, absolutely. So, my website where I have all my contact information on is laurenjourno.com. The information with the genetic testing, and if you're interested in that, is laurenjourno.com forward slash test. And it's L-A-U-R-E-N-J-A-W-N-O dot com or dot com forward slash test. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for that. Uh, We're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll we'll give you that information again, but we're going to have more conversation with Lauren. Academy with certified trainer, mediator, and life coach Clarence Caldwell returns after this short break. Are you ready to start rocking that woohoo that only you do? Because Lisa Stedman is on a mission. She will dare you, challenge you, enlighten you, provoke and empower you to bring out that inner woohoo. Lisa is an internationally acclaimed best-selling author. She's a breakup expert, a brand consultant, CEO of Woohoo Inc. and the Woohoo Radio Network. She will show you how to take your boohoo and turn it into woohoo. Get rebellious and get real. Get your dreams off the back burner. Get inspired and motivated to take action. Start rocking that woohoo that only you do in love, life, and business. She is going to be here for you every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Only here on the Woohoo Radio Network. This is iUniverse Radio, brought to you by iUniverse, the leading book marketing, editorial services, and supported self-publishing company. Welcome back to True Life Academy, your source for developing the skills and motivation to create an amazing life of purpose and fulfillment. With more transformational keys for success, here is your host, Clarence Caldwell. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to True Life Academy. We are here with the world-renowned, high-performance, certified high-performance coach, Lauren Jono. Now, Lauren, you were just giving us, right before the break, information about how to reach you. Let's do that again because I don't think I gave you enough time to get through that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so my website where all my contact information is laurenjorno.com. L-A-U-R-E-N-J-A-W-N-O dot com. 
And if you want specifically the information about the genetic testing, it's brand new, literally just getting this page up today, like an hour before the show, is laurenjourner.com forward slash test. So uh, that's where you can get the information. And then I'm also on Facebook, um, facebook.com forward slash Lauren Giorno. I'm on Twitter, but most active on Facebook and on my website where my link to my blog is as well. Excellent. So when you, when you blog, you, do you blog about these kinds of issues? Uh, whether, just tell us, what, what is it that we can expect to, to read about? Yeah, so my blogs are all about, you know, aspects of improving your life. So I've blogged about how to get rid of excess baggage in your life, whether that's physical baggage, emotional baggage. Um, I've blogged about the genetic thing, the one block of chocolate word versus the whole stab. That was um, quite a popular one. Um, so, yeah, it's just it's around the areas of just being more productive, being healthier, you know, what your mindset is, you know, all those key factors that are going to help us to be the absolute best that we can be. Yes. So when when we were talking about the, uh, I'll, I'll just call it the, the override strategies to our genetic uh, predispositions, these are not difficult things to do necessarily, but they're things we need to just to be conscious of and, and focus on in a different way. Is that a, a good way of saying it? Absolutely. So they are definitely not difficult, but they require consistency and discipline as with anything, right? Yes. So, but yeah, these are, it's not crazy stuff that you need to do. Okay. Well, you know, certainly if, when it comes to things that are, of, let's say, a physical nature, Let's say I'm I'm having a, a tough time, you know, losing, you know, I need to lose 20 pounds, and I just having a, all my life I've just been heavy, and you know, it must be genetics. My dad was big, my mom was big, so I, I'm going to be big. Um, so talk to us about the, the physiology of it all, and and how does that help us or or not? So again, like a part of that is genetics, and again, I fall into that camp, and so. One of the genes that we look at is your tendency to, or your predisposition to be, to binge eat, your predisposition to seek reward outside of yourself through food or other things. So again, that, you know, if that's your makeup, that's your makeup. You can't change it. You can't deny it. And so it is going to probably be harder for you to lose weight, A, just from a behavioral perspective, not necessarily a physiological perspective. Mm-hmm. And and that's where I think some people, you know, can mix it up. Like, I mean, and it could be physiological as well. So all of those aspects could come into it. But at the end of the day, like, everyone needs the discipline to eat healthy, to eat natural foods, to fuel their body for energy so that they can put the effort into all these things. Because, mm. you know, if you are living on donuts and coffee and sugar and processed food, then how much energy are you going to have to mentally or physically put to the discipline it's going to take to achieve the results that you want? Right. right. So, again, there's just so many different aspects that someone needs to consider and the consequences of the actions that we take. So, you know, someone may not have a weight issue at the moment, be getting away with eating processed food, donuts and coffee or whatever, and their weight isn't an issue. But I guarantee you their energy is an issue, their focus, their concentration, their productivity is an issue. So when we look at food, it's not just about, and this is, was a huge thing for me, obviously, it's not just about how you look on the outside, but it's what effect that has on your brain and your functioning and all the other things. Right, right. right. So, so uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you to, to give us something right now. Um, if you could give us one, two, three things that we could do relative to our physiology and our energy level that could make a huge difference for us. Uh, and, and know that everybody's different. I, I get that. Right. Right. Um, is there something that you mentioned some things like sugar and processed foods? Those would affect all of us in some way or another. But 
tell us tell us something that we could walk away with and, and start right away. You know, I th it almost seems like so. It's the you know what I'm going to say is so simple, but this is the thing that I have is that. So many people come to me for nutrition because that's my background. And they want to know, is it better to do the paleo diet? Is it better to be vegan? Is it better to be, um, I don't even know what the other diets are out there now. I'm so out of that, that loop. But, you know, like vegan, paleo, gluten-free, like they want to go to this like extreme level. And when I look at their diet, it's going like, dude, just cut out the sugar and drink more water and probably lose <laughs> 10 pounds like in a month. <laughs> and it's, so people are almost, they think the simple things are too good to be true, but it's those simple things that create that foundation that I think are going to create long-term success. So before you start worrying about paleo, vegan, gluten-free, like let's just clean up your diet and get some more vegetables in there, get some more water in there. Let's like look at your quality of your proteins and it's just people almost think that it's too simple, but actually yes, yes. it is that simple. Yeah, that's, a, that's an amazing thing that you would say that because yeah, I always encourage people to drink more water. Um, you know, three, three liters a day, five liters if you can, uh, depending on your body size, I'm sure. But it's difficult for people to do that, but they will drink that much in other things <laughs> absolutely they'll drink that much in coffee they'll drink that much i mean i've got one client who drinks i just can't like he'll drink four or five cans of diet pop a day uh. like you could he could so replace that with water he's just <laughs> not motivated to do it so it is it's the thing they and the other thing is that these are simple things to do they may not be easy for a lot of people to do Yes. And so it's almost like they want, want to look for something more complicated. I don't know why. Because, it's you know, I guess it's in. It's cool. Like I was at a function um, two weeks ago, and I walked in, and literally as I put my foot in door, one of the people said, we need to talk. I want to go gluten-free. And I go, why? He goes, because it's cool. And I'm going, okay, let's definitely talk. Because that may not be the best reason to be doing it. Well, you just say, hey, I got some other cool stuff you can do instead. <laughs> Get a genetic test, dude. <laughs> um, uh, so really for me, I try and start people with the simple stuff, like having more greens. Um, I don't think anyone eats, almost anyone, should I say, eats enough fresh vegetables. I, I, I agree with you. I don't think, I think that most people are not drinking enough water. And I think most people are eating... Too much. We actually need less food than we think we do. And the reality is, is if you eat good quality food, you don't get as hungry, so you don't need to eat as much. Right, right. Excellent. You, you know, when, when, uh, as you were talking, I'm thinking, you know, there's probably someone listening that wants to learn more, and you've given your website, uh, uh, and I'm sure your blog and other things have have great information on it that, that will be very valuable to them. But if someone wanted to work with you directly, do they need to be in your same hometown or how, how does that work? No, they don't. Actually, the majority of my clients are not in Toronto. And even those that are, I do, I would say 90% of my coaching I do via phone and Skype. So I literally, I have clients in England. I have a lot of clients from the States and I'm about to start a coaching group with a group of women in South Africa. So Great. I'm, yeah. So location is not an issue. That's excellent. That's excellent. Um, I, I, when you say group, uh, a group in South Africa, so now it's not just individuals, but you work with groups of people as well. Yes. I do group coaching as well. Uh -huh. So, um, so some people prefer that. They enjoy that. It also makes it more affordable for some people. So I do have both options. Right. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, are people willing to open up in groups like that and, and share, or is it, is it one-way dialogue or one, a monologue? No, I think telling? people that do come to a group, are, they wouldn't come if they weren't open to that. I mean, some people open up more than others. But also because it's primarily done over the phone or Skype, yes. there is that level of 
of privacy, so people can't necessarily see you. They don't have to know your name. So I think in a way that sometimes makes it easier. Sure, sure. For people that are concerned about that. So relative to, um, you mentioned a couple of, of big shifts in your life. One, certainly when you had your eating disorder, and then secondly, understanding and becoming much more in tune with the DNA uh, aspect of, of our makeup. Uh, is there one thing that you would say, whether it's one of those or something else, that, that really made a difference in your life overall? Um, I would say one of the huge things that um, have helped me was a lot of the tools that I learned through cognitive behavior therapy, which again are very practical, hands-on things that you can do anywhere, anytime of the day. You just have to know what they are. The other thing was the personality assessment that I did. You know, for many years when I didn't connect with someone, my immediate reaction was they don't like me and I've done something wrong and I must have said something wrong. And when I learned and studied the whole personality profile part of things and I realized that other people, and it's, again, it sounds so ridiculous, but not everyone's like me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that was a big that was a big eye opener that people have different needs, they process stuff differently, they speak differently, they have a different need for a different level of information and the way they receive it. That was like huge for me. And I do a lot of workshops around that. And that was like it, it was big for me that. Well, excellent. Well, Lauren, this this hour has gone by so quick. I, I really Hope that we can talk again. You'll come back sometime. I'd love to. Well, I am so appreciative of you taking the time, and I really, really honor the work that you're doing. And so thank you for all of that, and thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you so much, Clarence. It was absolutely awesome, and I hope your listeners um, get something and learn something from this. Absolutely. So thanks, everyone, for joining again this week. And as always, live with an attitude of gratitude. Live in thanks. Always give when you can and because you have the power to choose. Love first and then choose. Have a great week. We'll talk to you ne next week. Thanks. Thank you for joining us on today's True Life Academy. Certified coach, trainer, and motivational speaker, Clarence Caldwell, returns next week at this same time to share his keys to success to help you achieve the life you dream of. Yes, the life you were intended to live.